When you're training for private pilot or just brushing up on some fundamental skills, you hear a bunch of terms used for speed. There's airspeed, but different types. Indicated, calibrated, and true airspeed. And then there's ground speed. What do these mean, how do we figure them out, and why do we care? Let's start with ground speed, which is hopefully the easiest to understand. This is how fast we go from point A to point B on the ground. It's the same thing as your car speedometer tells you. We can use a chart, a timer, and some outside landmarks to determine our ground speed. Here, we're traveling north along the Maryland coast. We're going to start our timer when we're abeam the bridge here carrying Route 50 into Ocean City. As we do, let's bring up the map and talk about some easy mental math. We want to determine how far we travel in a certain amount of time. For distance, we can use the lines of longitude, the vertical lines on the chart. It's very important that you don't use the horizontal latitude lines because these lines shrink as you get closer to the pole so you don't get a constant distance between the hash marks. Anyways, we can see some distances to some landmarks from the Route 50 bridge. It's about three and a half miles to the next prominent bridge or causeway. Then it's about eight miles to the northern end of the developments in Ocean City. The beginning of Bethany Beach, Delaware, is 10 miles from our starting point, and that little reservoir just inland is at the 13-mile point. Okay, so what are we timing? Simply put, ground speed is how many nautical miles we travel in one hour. If we fly for an hour and see how far we get, the math is easy. Fly for 100 miles in an hour and you're going 100 nautical miles per hour, or 100 knots. We'd rather not fly a full hour just to figure out our ground speed, so an easy mental math solution is to fly for just a tenth of an hour. We can take a decimal point and shift it left then, so 10 miles flown in a tenth of an hour is also 100 knots. But what's a tenth of an hour? Well, if you're a lawyer or an accountant or a flight instructor or someone else who gets paid by fractions of an hour, you're probably aware that a tenth of an hour is six minutes. Again, take the 60 minutes in a full hour and shift the decimal point one spot left to get six minutes. So we'll time six minutes on this flight, and as long as we hold our speed and heading roughly steady, we'll take our distance flown and add a zero to it to get our ground speed. If you don't want to fly a full six minutes and don't mind a bit tougher mental math, you could do three minutes, and instead of adding a zero to the distance flown, you can double it and then add a zero. Five miles is then 100 knots. If you fly for two minutes, you need to add a zero and triple it. Three and a half miles is 100 knots again. We'll keep it simple and do the full six minutes. At the six minute mark, we see that we're not fully at that reservoir we noted at Bethany Beach, maybe a mile short of it. So we'll say we flew 12 miles in that six minute stretch in that one tenth of an hour. So we add a zero to that 12 miles and our ground speed is 120. So now let's look at airspeed. The thing we usually think of with airspeed is what's staring us in the face in the airspeed indicator. Here we're holding a pretty steady 100 knots indicated airspeed. There's a big caveat on this. Indicated airspeed is not our true airspeed. True airspeed is the speed we're actually moving relative to the air around us. Why would indicated airspeed not match true airspeed? It's because of how we're determining indicated airspeed. We use the pitot static system, which doesn't directly detect speed. It compares ram and static pressure to indirectly detect speed. The pitot static system is subject to installation errors which can cause the indicated airspeed to be off. We can get a calibrated airspeed by looking at the aircraft POH. At an indicated airspeed of 100 knots, we have a calibrated airspeed, what the airspeed indicator would read if we had a perfect system, of 98 knots. Not too bad a difference. But a larger difference comes from the fact that the pitot static system and the airspeed indicator are designed around the assumption that the temperature and pressure are standard, which they almost never are. This is summer and it's hot out. The air is less dense than standard, so there are fewer molecules being rammed into that pitot tube. In order to get the same 100 knots to read on the airspeed indicator, we have to fly faster, fly a higher, truer airspeed, move more molecules into that pitot. So we correct for non-standard pressure and temperature. We need the pressure altitude. Don't overcomplicate this. Unless it's an extraordinarily strange day, our indicated altitude will be close enough to pressure altitude that we can just use 3,500 feet. The temperature outside in Celsius is 26 degrees. We're now gonna turn the dial on the airspin indicator to line up 3,500 feet with positive 26 degrees, just kind of eyeballing it to see that our true airspeed is 110 knots. Why do we care? 
110 knots true airspeed is our speed through the air. 100 knots indicated or 98 knots calibrated is how fast the aircraft feels it's moving from an aerodynamic point of view. True airspeed is used to determine wind effects when compared to ground speed. Indicated airspeed is used to determine airspeed limitations. For example, all these speeds, like stall speed and maneuvering speed, are all based on indicated airspeed. A nifty trick if you have the Garmin 435-30 is to allow it to calculate these things for you. We'll use the large outer knob to twist over to the auxiliary menu, then push the cursor to hover over density altitude true airspeed winds. We'll enter the data we went over and the unit will give us an output on true airspeed, very closely matching the 110 knots we determined, as well as our density altitude and tailwind. One last thing, note that if we take the true airspeed, 109 knots, and add the tailwind to 12 knots, we get 121 knots. That's our ground speed, which is what we calculated doing our exercise with the timer and landmarks. There's more to both the theory and calculations of speeds, so head over to the Flight Insight course page linked here and in the description and see these topics and others covered in our ground schools.